So, hi, gentlemen. Thank you hey. for taking the time to talk with me. Thank you. Sure. Now, before we jump into the new album, Come of Age, I would like to jump back to the previous one because the album was released, I think, in 2021, made kind of in that whole pandemic era. And I've heard from a lot of artists and musicians that a lot of those albums kind of fell into some kind of a, a black hole. So how do you look back at the first album that you made? It's a good question. Um, yeah, actually, it. I think, did, did our EP come out actually in 2020? Our first EP? So we... Yeah, the first EP was, uh, was 2020. Yeah. Right when the pandemic hit, we released our first EP and and uh, that was weird because, you know, it just felt like people were saying, oh, you should wait, you know, or, you know, but our, our, our attitude's always been just like, hey, push it out the door. And same with thanks for coming. Like, I think we just, you know, a lot of people needed music during the pandemic. And I don't believe for a second that it was necessarily a bad decision that we put it out. I don't think we even hesitated. We, we wanted to give people more of our music. We knew people, we had like a captive audience of people that were just not doing much. And so, you know, but in, in hindsight, I, I'm, I'm really, you know, proud that we did that. You know, I mean, we're building a story. It takes time. So you got to get your stuff out the door and not hold on to anything. And, and I think that's been our attitude all the way. Yeah, that's interesting that you mentioned that because whenever the band was conceived and obviously you don't have to do it for for the commercial success of it what what was the intention with that band because i i can imagine playing music together is always fun but then to release it uh what was kind of the reasoning behind that i think i mean we never set out to be a band we just um you know matt and peter made these amazing instrumental tracks that i heard and casually said if you want somebody to experiment with singing on these let me know and i started and the three of us just found ourselves able to write songs uh without really setting out with that intention the next thing we knew we'd probably written 10 songs and we decided we should play them for someone other than just ourselves so we booked a gig and it's been like that ever since we've just been kind of um trying to um keep up with what seems to be happening in spite of any conscious intention. <laughs> right. um, and, and yeah, I think, I think, you know, the decision to release the full length during the pandemic was, you know, we were, we were sitting on a lot of music and um, like Peter said, you know, we didn't want to hold on to it just because the world was shut down. <laughs> it, it actually, you know, committing to releasing that record and, and continuing to write to finish it, I think kept us all kind of creatively engaged and sane mm -hmm. during the pandemic. So, uh, but yeah, anyway. No, that makes sense. And then the last question kind of uh, about the background mm -hmm. of you guys is, is what then makes this, this, yeah, this, this uh, synergy between you work so well between the three of you well how would you describe this chemistry yeah i think um that's something that we've sort of all promised ourselves never to attempt to answer <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> we don't want to we don't want to spoil it <laughs> yeah it's sort of like naming the unnameable you know mm -hmm. and, um and then yeah, it's just something that we're there to witness and we're like, wow, that's really, that's really cool. Yeah. yeah these songs for someone. And I would add to that, just like, I think we each bring something completely unique, you know, to the table and, and, and not all bands, you know, have that kind of balance. I think being three really helps. We fit together like a puzzle and it just, we're all very different people and that, the, the, um, diversity within us each as individuals really makes this something interesting and like matt said it's like we don't even know what the fuck it is but we just we love it <laughs> but is that true then for songwriting because i'm always in a in a kind of a weird position as a music journalist where you try to analyze something as you say matthew that shouldn't be analyzed it's kind of it's it's very emotive and so you kind of need to let it be what it is 
Um, but is that your? Uh, do you have a similar uh, approach with songwriting then, where you kind of let the song be what it is and kind of pull it out of the ether from somewhere? Yeah, we have this sort of ethos where we find songs, you know, anywhere we can, under the bed, in the fridge, like, you know, <laughs> however and ha wherever they come, we're we're trying to be awake enough to to um, grasp them and hold on to them long enough to get them into our, you know, computer and onto our records. You know, I, I think it's, we don't have any one way of doing that. And I think uh, over the last five years, we've probably written, you know, a hundred different ways, you know, and, and we, that's the other thing. We, we haven't really stopped writing. I mean, we have stopped a little bit this year to get ready for this, this, uh, this full length, but I mean, we're always looking for new ideas, but for, I'd say for the first four years, we were solidly just working on music. And then that, that since the pandemic was just this blossoming time for us, where we were discovering our own voices together, our, our communal voice and like putting it down on paper and getting busy, you know? And like Mike said, it really kept us feeling alive and connected in a time when right. it was hard to feel that. You know? And I can yeah. imagine, when you then start to think about that second album and what would become uh, come of age, how do you whittle down kind of all those ideas? You, you mentioned uh, hundreds of songs ideas. So, so how do you whittle that down to to what it has become now? What what is the select a selection criteria in a sense? I think it's ultimately intuitive. Um, you know, uh, we don't have a sort of hard and fast mission statement about what does or doesn't uh, qualify to be on the record. It's more about the flow of the sequence and um, the, the accompanying flow of the words and, and how things feel of a piece. I think this record is is maybe more of a piece than the first. I mean, we still are, you, you know, we don't feel bound by a particular way of writing music or right. making music or style but i do think that maybe there's there's more of a cohesiveness sonically lyrically um we're inside it so it's hard to say for sure but um yeah i think i think um i think there are different sides of us and in the case of this record there are there are maybe some some sides of us that we <laughs> compartmentalized for other potential releases, other ways of recording certain songs, um, maybe more of a, an acoustic vibe in some cases, but, uh, but ultimately I think it's just, um, it's just about feel, you know, there's, there aren't any hard and fast rules. It's just um, kind of just get out of the way and let, let the, let the songs that are included in the sequence reveal themselves. What is a, because I imagine every song is a little bit different, but what is the general way that you work? Do you start with the music first and then, Michael, you write lyrics over it? Or is lyric writing something you do collectively? How, how do you kind of generally uh, arrive at a, at a finished song? Um, the lyrics um, are mine, uh, but, you know, as far as there have been songs that have been sort of fully executed musical comp compositions that I found a melody and lyric for. There have been lyrics that were floating around and worked their way into uh, some sort of improv improvisational thing. Um, there are old bits of ideas that, that Peter or Matt had that sort of clicked in with new or old ideas of mine and then blossomed into something else. There's, I mean, there's uh, no really set formula. Um, and, and we try to um, let each song be its own kind of new formula, mm. I guess. Yeah, what is, is there something then uh, you're looking for specifically in terms of sonic textures on this new album or in terms of uh, kind of the feel that you wanted to create uh, the the I, I never like the word vibe but kind of the vibe that you, that you try to set for for the listener 
That's a good question. I think we, like Mike said, we this record feels a little more focused than our other two releases in a way that hangs together maybe that, you know, and there were a couple songs on this record, Whatever Whispers and, and Blur, which we started going down the road production-wise, One Direction and, you know, midstream, we were like, you know what, this let's completely strip this back down and reproduce it and try it again. And and those ended up being successful. Sometimes you do that and it's not, it doesn't work and you go back to the original. But we, we I think I'd probably say on both of those songs, we went in a more pop direction than maybe a more, you know, the usual suspects of what we, what instruments we have laying around our studio. And, and that was kind of fun to do. And also just fun to, it's fun to mess with your songs like that in a way where you're, I think we write the kind of songs that can wear different clothes and still translate to whoever's listening to it, you know, and, and that was pretty satisfying. And I think that maybe was in the name of, you know, bringing the record more together as a whole but but I don't, I don't even know we weren't really thinking that we were just intuitively working let me ask you uh like this then M michael is there one song where you heard the demo that immediately kind of uh uh ignited s some inspiration in you in terms of lyrics or just just some idea that that you had because i can um, imagine that that music influences kind of the words that come out and vice versa as well yeah um well i do think um both in the case of blur and come of age those two songs those were you know they went through some modification as we moved forward constructing the song as a whole but they were pretty fully realized song structures that um that matt had shared and they they served to maybe focus and flesh out lyrical notions that I'd play, been playing with independent of the songs and helped kind of <laughs> the, the, the sound of the song help mm -hmm. somehow flesh out or reveal the, the extent of the lyrical idea, you know. Um, sometimes if necessity is the mother of invention, maybe the necessity of a, of a, of a musical structure helped to find you know help me to invent or or at least finish lyrical ideas um so in the case of those two i think they were both hearing them kind of produced in me a sense of aha um an aha moment um having to do with the the lyrical ideas that sort of were were there sorry my car is talking <laughs> so it's quite Shut all right <laughs> But when it comes to the lyrics, then uh, is it very autobiographical, or can you can you write in a narrative style? Then and maybe it's also fun to ask Pete and Matt. Uh, is it, how do you perceive uh, Michael's lyrics? Was there one line or something that stuck out uh, that he came up with uh, on this new album? So many, Matt. I liked one you <laughs> a um... yeah. One of my favorites, if not my favorite, is. Um... The wonder of this blossoming depends on fallen leaves mm -hmm. from Offering, the first song. And um, that one always gets in my head, just like every day, pretty much. Okay. Yeah. But especially in autumn when I'm seeing the leaves falling. And in spring, and in summer, in winter. <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking of one. Um, God, there's a lot on this record that I... I'm in love with lyrically. <sighs> I might have to come back to you on that. <laughs> no, mean, no, fair enough. I do love the whole of come of age lyrics are just some of my favorite lyrics that Mike's pulled out. Um, as a whole, how it starts sort of almost like universally and then second verse gets more laser focused and almost individually and then I don't know. I don't follow any kind of patterns. I don't know. It's just a really beautiful. Shimmer also stands out as one of my favorite Mike lyrics on this record of just being one long sort of continuous poem, not concerned with verses and choruses, just concerned with, you know, unraveling itself to the end, you know? 
Yeah, and then get, getting back to the initial part, M Michael, what is kind of your approach then in terms of lyric writing? Are are they poems? Are they narratives? Are they kind of uh, journal entries, very personal things? That, how do you perceive your your uh, lyric writing? Um, I don't. I don't know. I don't really um, define it um, in any of those terms. Okay. okay. I'm um, sorry. I don't really define it in any of those terms. I just, um, I don't know. I, I feel like when one, in one way or another, they're all informed by the melody and rhythm that the music reveals. And, and without those in mind, the words probably wouldn't come the way they come. Mm. I mean, in some cases, maybe they, pre-existing musical ideas, but there's at least some sort of rhythm. Um, but um, I don't know, sometimes I'm telling like, or have a specific story in mind. Um, sometimes it's um, maybe less concrete than that, but um, I guess they're journal entries and as much as sometimes they are originally written in a journal, but <laughs> okay. um, yeah. Now, one song that really stood stood out to me um, was Glasswing. So I'm going to be self-indulgent and I'll ask about that song. Uh, what was the starting point uh, for that song? Was it, was it just a musical idea? How did that song get off the ground? That was you, Peter, right? With the like a chord loop. Didn't you have a chord loop? Yeah, I, I think it's literally that song is a two chord jam throughout the entire song, which I love writing like that where you don't try to get too fancy. And most, I mean, probably because I'm a drummer, I tend to write some really simple songs. And and Matt came in and threw on some electric bass and some cool synths. And yeah, just started with a bunch of samples of sounds. And um, and I'll let Mike tell you about the lyrics and, and Matt tell you about his thing. But that, yeah, it's just a very simple start. And see where we can go how we how the melodies and lyrics can change and drive the song and the synths and the, and the layering of the instruments can can build it so it doesn't get boring because it's a long jam you know and it also has that great solo in it you know which I love. yeah particularly what you say the uh, layering of those textures i found really interesting and then that guitar tone <laughs> the guitar tone is quite uh, good as well so matthew maybe maybe you can elaborate a little bit more on that yeah, thanks. That's um, it's actually a keyboard solo. Okay. Keyboard. I think it may even be a key tar, which yeah. is, a keyboard, but you have to play it like this. You know, like hold the guitar. If you put it down to play it, it just doesn't make a sound. It refuses. It's like nah, I'm not gonna make a sound. <laughs> you have to play it like this. So I think um, I think that's maybe why it sounds a bit like a guitar, and it has that cool tone to it. Yeah, that, that, I was once uh, a Bob Marley guitar solo, if I remember correctly. I always thought it was guitar, but it ended up be, just being a piano and some 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 plug-in. So that's it's interesting how that goes right in Concrete Jungle, I believe. Oh, huh. wow! I love that. I'll have to go and listen to that. That's that's great. Yeah, or like the Beatles, "In My Life." Everyone thinks that's a um, harpsichord solo. That's mm. piano that's been sped up. I just love. Um, little tricks like that where yeah you, there but do you have a lot of that uh, experimentation especially on the production side or is that uh yeah is that a quite quite a quick process yeah i think we we like to do both we like to um work quickly without kind of overthinking an idea um but then at the same time we want to find the right thing um mm -hmm. and then once we find the right the right sound the right idea it's easy to then um move on you know and not belabor it and then we have a wonderful mixer and mix engineer who we work with named brandon boast and um he is also very responsible for a lot of the sonic beauty and the layering and um just a lot of things on this record and the last record because he mixed both records and okay. he's an incredible fellow who's worked with so many incredible artists and he just gets us uh really entirely so we sort of give our sessions over to him and then we know that we're in very good hands with what he does 
it also helps that Matt and both Matt and Brandon are real life wizards who wield a lot of magic spells in their uh, arsenal. But that, that, I mean, that's probably the fun thing about music as well. And as you mentioned earlier, kind of the unpredictability of where, where something might end up is, is always the, the interesting part, I suppose. I have two more questions. Uh, first one being uh, the album title is named after a song come of age. Uh, so, so how come this title? Is, it, is the song a little bit more uh, special than some of the others? Or, or how did you arrive at this album title? I think, uh, well, the first the first record was uh, named after one of the songs. Thanks for coming. It seemed like a, a, for a good, an appropriate title for a first full length record. Um, and come is a variation of coming. So thanks for coming. Come of age. It just um, I mean, I, you know, we didn't again, we didn't um, really it just felt right. Um, and and maybe there is some some um, some hope or aspiration that we're evolving, and um, that could be a part of it. Um, I think um, there might be something aspirational more broadly in the title. Um, <laughs> maybe maybe a, maybe maybe some sort of hope for the world. <laughs> But um, as much as anything, I think we were just inclined to 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 stick with the uh, trend. If one record makes a trend of uh, naming our naming our full links after one of the tracks, and that that's the one that uh, felt the felt the best to us. Okay, and then finally, because and I, I've alluded to this in the beginning, but you're playing uh, live in September in the US and then and, and you're coming over to Europe uh, in October, I believe, as well. So this notion of not only creating this music, not only bringing it out, but then then to come see the people and play it for them and kind of have uh, be able to see in person how people react and that kind of stuff. How important is that to this band? Because you have a, you, you guys are quite busy, I suppose. It's, it's always great to, you know, sh like Mike said the other day, share the same air with a bunch of people and be sharing the same vibrations. And I don't know, I, I always think of live shows as sort of like these big pep rallies of just exchanging mm -hmm. energy and and sharing energy and sharing a moment with people and. You know, I mean, I would start with that. I don't know what Mike and Matt have to add to that, but just to get bring people together and share the music, it is another side of the band. It we we build on what our records do live with with live playing, and and it it just ends up feeling really good. So it's addictive, kind of. You know, in this case, in this band, it is to to play. Yeah, I would second what Peter says, and um, I think live is a very important thing for any music person, any band, really. It's a transformative ritual for all of us, for the audience, for the performers. That's how I feel when I see a show. I just saw the Pixies last night, mm -hmm. and uh, I was so glad that I did. And, um, you know, it's just one of those things where it makes people happy to see us play, and it makes us really happy to go out and play these songs for other people. Yeah, finally, Mike, for you, uh, getting this instant feedback, what, what is that like for you? Um, I mean, I feel like it's uh, it's when it all comes to life, you know? It's, mm -hmm. it's like, just add live, and all of a sudden the songs live in a way that they hadn't quite, you know? Um, uh and yeah, I mean, I agree with everything Matt and Peter said, you know, there's something about um, it all happening in the same space, uh, breathing the same air. It, it, um, it, it gives the songs a vitality that they can't in their purely recorded form, you know, and, and maybe informs people's experience of the songs after the fact and certainly teaches us a lot about the songs. Mm -hmm. 
playing them live. It's like the only way to, you can record a song, but until you play it live, you don't really know it. I think on that note, gentlemen, may I thank you so much for taking the time to talk with me. Thank you, man. Great questions. Thank, oh, thank you. you. Yeah, thank you too.